everyone. I'm enormously pleased with the guests that we've been having on our Women in Tech Like a Boss podcast. And I hope you're enjoying all of the guests and wonderful insights that you're hearing too. Now, I've known our next guest, Nadine Vogel, for a long time. In fact, she was one of the first people who started talking about diversity, inclusion, and disability, and how to be able to work with people with disabilities and create opportunities. So it's my tremendous pleasure to introduce her here as the CEO of Springboard, which is a global enterprise composed of three different companies, including one nonprofit foundation. Hi, Nadine. Hey, how are you? It's good to talk to you again. I'm so excited that you're on our podcast. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. It's very exciting. Now, since the last time we talked, you've been up to oh, creating a few more companies and a nonprofit foundation in there since you started Springboard <laughs> Consulting. So maybe you want to tell us a little bit about the companies in your foundation? Absolutely. So Springboard Consulting works with corporations in about 40 countries around the world to mainstream people with disabilities in the workforce, the workplace, and the marketplace. And in addition to consulting, we do training and compliance and all talent acquisition. We also produce events called Disability Matters, which are our annual corporate conference and awards gala. We have one in North America, one in Europe, one in Asia every year, uh, along with some smaller events. Then we have Disability Mama, which is a company that educates, celebrates, and honors women all around the world who have children with special needs. Uh, next is the Springboard Foundation, which is a 501c3 that provides scholarships to college students with disabilities. And lastly is the WIP Group, W-I-P, which stands for Women, Influence, and Power. And it really is just that. It's working with women to help them understand and effectively utilize the influence and power that they may not realize they have. You have been busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're seeking with respect to funding or partnerships or, or whatnot. You know, I, what, what's that saying? It takes a village. So I'm, I'm really, really fortunate to have an incredible village of a team uh, that, that works with me, but we find that that village isn't, you know, enough. So we are always aligning with, partnering with either our clients, you know, some of the corporate entities, or sometimes just other organizations, educational institutions. As an example, we partnered a European university in Rome, came to us about a year and a half ago, and said they want to develop a curriculum around disability. With respect to Springboard Consulting, can you tell us, you know, as a global enterprise, what your company's mission is? It is to mainstream people with disabilities in the global workforce, workplace, and marketplace. Now, with respect to your vision, which obviously ties into that, how are you changing the world and whose lives are you really changing? Oh, that's a great question. So when we look at Springboard and we look at the mission, what we consider from a vision standpoint is to really eliminate this whole idea of discrimination such that when companies are, are putting these initiatives forward, they're doing it in a way that it's not a special project, it's not a special thing they're doing, but rather it's seamlessly integrated so that it's someday, my vision is that someday, nobody needs to say, oh, we're doing this for the disability group or people with disabilities need X. It's just about people and people first. When we speak about equality, we're not really, or we shouldn't be, talking about treating everyone the same, but rather giving everyone the same opportunity to be successful or to purchase a product, something like that. Ah, cheers to getting rid of labels on people. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you think makes you a good leader? Hmm, that's a better question for my peeps, but um, <laughs> I think that one of the things that we do is we cross train. So although everyone has a, a primary role and, and they stick with it, they always have to take on other roles that people have. What's the hardest thing you've ever had to do? Oh, uh, for me, because I'm all about the people and the relationships, the hardest thing I ever had to do was lay a couple of people off. That was traumatic uh, for me. I, I can imagine. <laughs> Absolutely traumatic because I have, I have a deal with everyone that works at Springboard and it's that if you come to work here and you're really good, 
till death do us part. We're sticking together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, indeed. It's, but I guess if you approach it with empathy you know, and understanding, you know, it's the best that you can do. So why do you do what you do, knowing that there's uh, some risks of downside sometimes? I have two adult daughters that have disabilities, one more significant than the other. Everything I have done in the past almost 29 years and everything I do today in some way or shape is done to benefit them or others like them. And I should share that everyone at Springboard either has a disability or is caring for someone with a disability. So it is extremely personal to everyone that works here. And you walk the walk. You have to. Yeah. You know what? If you don't, people know it in a nanosecond. That's right. And so maybe that speaks to the next question, which is really how your company is different from everyone else's. There are diversity organizations out there, and they go through all aspects of diversity. We focus, like I said, stay in our lane, right? So we focus on disability. We go deep. So it's every disability type. We have dedicated practices on neurodiversity, on mental health, and you know, service-disabled veterans. We do have a practice around intersectionality with LGBTQ and veterans, but again, it's as it aligns to disability. I think that is big. The other is that everyone at Springboard comes from a corporate executive role, so we understand what that unique animal is like, and meaning what their needs are that might be different than a small business or, or someone else. We're operating in about 40 countries around the world. This next question might not be a fair ask, but I'm going to go there anyway. Given that you're already the CEO of a global enterprise with three companies involved, including a foundation that sets aside scholarships for college students with disabilities, what's holding you back from being like wildly successful, Nadine? <laughs> truly, um, this is just not, and it's, I think every, all of your listeners will relate. Uh, there is just not enough hours in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Like, look if what you've I accomplished be, already. If I could be four people, you know, if I could clone, you know, all the key people in the organization, it would be really cool. Um, and I, that's just the biggest challenge. I have more, as do our whole leadership team, we have more ideas and more things we want to do than just the days allow. And, and that's just it, right? It comes down to prioritization and just doing your best. I mean, you're already tremendously successful. As you said, it was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek question asking you that, but, but there we go. <laughs> Continuing on here. Now, if you could take a magic wand and wave away anything from your past, what would you change? What would be different? When you look at a company, a, a large corporation, folks talk about corporate culture, but at the end of the day, the corporation is made up of people, Right. And people come to a job or to own a company with their baggage, if you will, you know, based on what they grew up with, their, their you know, myths, their ideas, their biases, et cetera, their experiences. And that informs who they are as, as they go through their life and, and, and informs what they do in a corporate environment. So I was one of these people that when I was younger, um, you know, thought, and I'm sure your listeners will get this, but, you know, thought nothing could, could touch me, right? You know, I was a control. So, you know, if I was a little overweight, eh, not a big deal, I'll lose it, you know, later on. So I don't finish this, I'll do it later. Um, I have spent a good deal of my, I'm, I'm 56, I don't have a problem saying that. Um, <laughs> I have spent a good deal of my 50s, you know, just working on me personally. A number of years ago, I lost about 60 pounds. I've worked with a trainer, oh, you know, touch it up. So things that are really personal that I wish I had paid more attention to instead of only focusing on the career and what I was building professionally, thinking the personal stuff would just, you know, I'll deal with it later. That would be a big change I would make. Yeah, that, that's tremendous. You just have that self-awareness. And like you said, it comes with being 50, right? It's that 50 and free. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> If you had a book that you wanted to recommend to our readers, is there one or two that you'd like to suggest? Sure. Um, if any of the listeners or readers are or want to know about the disability inclusion piece, uh, Dive In. It, it's a book that I wrote. It focuses on the productivity, 
profitability and potential of the special needs workforce. We um, interviewed about 20 very senior executives and asked them for their best practices in, in all of these areas. Starting in a month, I am going to be hosting two TV shows, one on Bloomberg TV and one on RVN TV. Well, now, what else do you want people to know? It's not about what happens to you in life. It's about what you do with it that matters. Follow your gut to do amazing things when others just kind of wallow in the misery or the sadness. Want to add anything else to that with respect to other tips that you'd like to offer the next generation? Trust your gut. We find often, especially younger and especially women, uh, will not trust their gut. They succumb to, well, I haven't had enough experience doing this or I'm still young. Go for it. I guarantee you'll know what's best. Remember one thing is that if you can show value relative to their business goals and objectives or professional goals and objectives, then when they achieve them, they're going to take you up with them. Well said. Now, the last question, which is a little fun and a little sillier from the other questions we've been asking here so far, but if your shoe style was your personality, would you be boots, stilettos, sneakers, flats, or flip-flops? So that's really a funny question for me because <laughs> we, we, well, we relocated our business from New Jersey to Florida about two and a half years ago. So that kind of changes that shoe style, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah. Um, so the transition that I mentioned earlier about like the weight loss, well, that's all about the sneakers, right? So Florida is all about the flip flops. The, the gym every day is all about the sneakers. The, the business aspect is more the, the conservative nature, which is more the pump. So, so for me, um, probably when people listening to this are going to be like, wow, she has a split personality. <laughs> <laughs> are you a Gemini? <laughs> and I, I, I'm actually a Libra. You, you know, I'm supposed to be so balanced. Um, but I think that for all of us, we have to, you know, I think that we have to remember we're not any one thing. There's so many aspects to who we are, and we should really embrace that and not try to put ourselves into, a, you know, into one category, because I think for different things in our life, different areas that we want to be successful, it requires boots or it requires flip-flops. It requires different parts of ourselves. And so I encourage especially the younger women listening to this to really embrace all of it. Don't feel like you have to conform to one because you're going to lose other parts of yourself that you're not going to want to lose. I love it. Nadine, thank you so much for being on our podcast and all that you do trying to move the, or change the movement really in the attitudes towards disability and really working towards inclusion with all the work as well on Disability Mama, your Springboard Foundation and your Women Influence and Power. We're going to make sure we tune into Bloomberg to catch upcoming program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Laura Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. This is fabulous. And how about that fantastic intro by Touch Circle?
And how about that fantastic intro by Touch Circle? <laughs> 